last video for me of 2019. 2019. Let's hope it's a good year. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. I hope you all had a fantastic new year. And uh, for me, it's uh, first day back. And uh, well, not really the first day back. I've just come in to do uh, catch a few leaks. So, but it's an operation that you've not seen before. It's something that I used to do on the farm a lot. It was when I not first started, but it was my responsibility before I got moved on to uh, doing the drilling. So I thought we'd have a look at the leak harvester, which should just be coming up behind me. Simon's at the controls. We've got Romus on the Manny 2 loading the boxes. And I'm carting the boxes back to the pack house where they'll be graded, or washed, graded, sides, packed, and ready for the, uh, ready for the supermarket. So Simon's just coming past me now, so I'll have a look. Here he is. Got a Puma CVX, and this is an Asia Lift PO335 leak harvester, which can also be used to lift carrots. And we'll have a look at it. Well, we'll have a look and show you how it uh, lifts them, what it does, how it puts them in the boxes. And uh, yeah, we'll have a look then. Happy days! <laughs> Now we've got the Mighty 240 on carting duties today, which as you all know is, uh, is my everyday tractor, which is looking pretty nice. I give her a nice good old clean before Christmas, but uh, it's a bit wet now, soil's, uh, you know, the weather's certainly not what it was like in summer, so unfortunately it's getting dirty, but I shall just have to, uh, I shall just have to deal with it. <laughs> Guys, yeah, so I just want to really quickly point out, before we have a look at the machine, obviously this machine has got an awful lot of moving parts and it could quite easily pick you up and spit you out without even realising it. So obviously farm safety is, is paramount and I just want to point out that the GoPro may look like I'm closer than I actually am to the machine um, just because of the, the sort of lens it's got, the zoom or... However, it has a habit of making, making things look closer than they are so yeah just want to point that out because obviously statistically farming is a dangerous job but if we just think about what we're doing for a little bit it doesn't have to be a dangerous job there's no way i'd ever stick my arm or any part of my body into that machine while it's running because there's only one way that that can end and uh, there's we've all heard the horror stories so yeah so before we have a look at the machine i just wanted to point that out so uh sam was coming up here now so we'll have a look Hey! Right, so starting at the front of the machine then, the business end. These two things on the front here, these two cone shaped objects, are called torpedoes. And their job is to lift the flag leaves up from the plant and guide them towards the two discs there, which cut the tops of the flags off. Now that can be altered to take more of the flag off or less, and at the minute we're not taking too much flag leaf off. But sometimes we can adjust it so we can take an awful lot more flag leak off Next to it this stick at the front is the automatic depth sensor Which has got two shoes on the bottom with four sensors Which monitor <coughs> the ground conditions and alter the height of the machine accordingly If it goes over a hump they lift the machine up so it, it's working at a constant depth all the time Now underneath at the, underneath the torpedoes there's a share, a shaker and the belts right, so how this machine works it runs off of belts so there's two belts which run parallel to each other which grab a hold of the leak gently and lift it out of the ground but if it were to just have the belts and no share, it'd pull the leaks out of the ground and damage them. So the share underneath loosens the leak slightly, while the belts grab a hold of the leak and lift them up. Right, so the crucial part of this machine is getting the belt and the share set up correctly. There's three main things that, it, that we need to get right in order for it to work properly. The first one, we've got to make sure the belt grabs hold of the leaks just slightly before the share loosens the soil underneath. If it was the other way around, the leak could lay itself down or flip to one side and the belts wouldn't be able to grab a hold of it. 
So there's a fine line of not having the belts grabbing the leak first. <coughs> if the belts grab it too quickly, it'll try to pull it out of the ground before the shares loosened it and we can damage the leaks. So the third thing that we need to watch out for is the belt speed has got to be set. If the belt speed is going too fast, it'll pull the leaks out too quickly and cause some more damage. The belt speed has got to be going just fractionally faster than the tractor's forward speed. So that way the leaks are gently being lifted out the ground, they're not being yanked, they're just slowly being lifted nice and gently, causing no damage, because damage is what we don't want to do, and lifted up, up the machine. Right, so to get the soil off, because obviously we want to be keeping the soil in the field, there's a few different parts on this machine that keep the soil off. So the first one, or the second one really, 90% of the soil gets taken off on the bottom shaker shoe, and then the second shaker bar in the middle. And that gently rocks from side to side, which you can adjust the speed. You have it too aggressive, again, you can damage and bruise the leaks too slow and it doesn't do anything. So depending on soil conditions, you have to alter the speed. So that gently rocks the leaks and knocks the soil off. I hope you can see that. Right, so moving on from the shaker, we've got three sets of rotating fingers. The first one is positioned like this across the leaks and the fingers on that one uh, are quite a, a dense rubber compared to the ones behind and that knocks quite a lot of soil off because it's going against the flow of leaks now the ones behind are quite light flexible rubber and they rotate and just kiss the roots of the leaks to bring off any more bits of soil so by the time they get up to the top there shouldn't be much soil left on them at all because we want the soil to stay in the field and not going back to the pack house with the crop right so moving on from the fingers then we've got this little kicker belt here and this is a really important part of the lifting operation above the the kicker belt is where the belts end where the journey up the side of the machine will stop now we want all the leaks facing the right way so in order to get the leaks facing the right way, that kicker belt has to slow, be going just slightly slower than the leaks are travelling to knock the leaks just to one side and the belt above has got to let go of the leaks just at the right time so as the leaks come off the belt, they land on the discharge belt there flat. And that, when it first came, took some setting up trying to get right because it's, it's very, very, very difficult, especially in variable conditions with different leaks, to, to get it to, to work properly, but we need all the leaks facing the right way in the box to avoid damaging them. To illustrate the last point, here we are, all the leaks coming off, that belt all facing exactly the same way, which is exactly what we want. Now Simon from the cab is controlling this discharge belt, so what he'll do, he layers the leaks in, starts at the bottom corner, and slowly layers the leaks in, not putting any pressure on the leaks that are in the box until the box is full and then there's a set of forks on the side which he controls from inside the cab which you can drop the box off with and then Romus will take the box and load it and it will be on its way back to the pack house so this is Romus? yes yes me me <laughs> you're a very good man Romus yeah. very good man <laughs> right so that box is full You can see there the forks are lowering it down on the side. Drop the box off. Simon will drive now drive back up to where he finished. And along comes Romus. We'll put another box on the side. And up she goes, ready for another load.
Ah, so we jumped in cab with Simon for a bit. You've, uh, you've not met Simon yet. Simon is the uh, operator of the Leak Harvest Store. You want to say hello, Simon? Hello, happy new year. Ah, well done. Well done, your first time on camera. <laughs> Uh, so to the to the right of Simon's head, you'll see uh, like a silver box, and that's the control box of the leak harvester. That controls all the the external functions of the leak harvester. There's quite a lot on there, so if I ever get in it, I'll um, you know when Simon's on holiday, I'll uh, I'll show you what the controls do. So next to the uh, control box up there, there's a screen, and the screen's got two pictures on it. The picture on the left, you maybe can't see from there. Is, uh, is the front of the leak harvester, it's the torpedoes at the front that we saw earlier on and that's just so Simon can monitor and make sure the leak harvester is running exactly in the middle of the leaks that he's harvesting the screen to the right of that is a camera which is facing the box so Simon's looking forward, seeing where he's going he can, he can quickly glance and have a look at the box and see what's happening there at the same time so Simon's just now dropping a box off Leak harvest is uh, driven by the tractor's PTO. It's a 540 speed, but we always run it a little bit lower than that. And also, it needs a constant hydraulic feed from the tractor as well to operate things like the discharge elevator and uh, work the automatic depth at the side. Right then, so that's. Uh, that's a quick look at the leak harvester. I say a quick look, it's probably going to turn out to be one of my long videos. <laughs> but uh, thanks ever so much for watching. It's nice for me to be able to show you this, because like I've said in, in uh, past videos, you've really not seen everything that we get up to down here on the farm. And um, there's lots of other operations that I don't do, but sometimes I'll end up on, so I can show you them. So hopefully, maybe some point in the future, uh, when Simon's on holiday, I'll be jumping on the leak harvester so I'm sort of the relief driver for it and, uh, and I'll show you sort of the operator's view you know what using the controls and stuff like that which I uh, which I'm quite fond of doing <laughs> so uh, I'm going to get back to carting some leaks my trailer's uh, trailer's nearly full get back to taking the leaks to the pack house and uh, yeah so thanks ever so much for watching and if you'd uh, if you're just watching this channel and you're not subscribed please feel free to subscribe and uh, something I haven't mentioned before which I keep forgetting is there's uh, well a little bell on the screen somewhere the bell icon so you can get notifications of when I upload videos and and all uh, all stuff like that I've never mentioned it and everybody else does and I thought I'm missing a trick here I'm missing a trick but um, yeah and also I've got a Facebook page Johnny1388 on Facebook I do sort of as regularly as I can put a few things on there because um, YouTube isn't that great for just communicating with people unless you put a video out and also if you'd like to like um, the farms page Polybell Organic uh, that'd be great because without them I wouldn't be able to make these videos and uh, also for anybody that's interested if you've been around for a while now to the channel you'll know about it uh, Simply Agri I got asked uh, a few times if I had any sort of merchandise available and uh, the answer was always no but now there is <laughs> yeah so there's all sorts of stuff on there not just stuff from my channel there's uh, yeah well tell you what go and have a look <laughs> if you've not seen it before it'd be lovely and, and as always just you know let me know in the comments uh, what you think so lovely hi right, guys I will see you on the next one oh camera wobble